We come now to Isaiah chapter 22 in the burden of the valley of vision, which is Jerusalem, which is where Satan will appear as the Antichrist at the woe of the sixth trumpet. Then 70 evenings later, which are what the 70 years in captivity to the Babylon of old were a type of, the true Christ will return at the woe of the seventh trumpet, which is when the battle of the valley of Haman Gog we saw pointed toward in the last chapter happens, as well as the battle of Armageddon in close proximity to Jerusalem in Judea, which is the subject of Isaiah chapter 22. So with a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, what aileth thee now that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops, thou that art full of stirs, which means noise, a tumultuous city, joyous city, thy slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle, because they'll be slain spiritually at 666 when they worship Satan instead of Christ. Those who were Christians and citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem even, as you can see in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 through 24. But then at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, they'll be slain spiritually for the most part, becoming citizens of Babylon, which means confusion. All thy rulers are fled together, they are bound by the archers, all that are found in thee are bound together, which have fled from far. And remember we saw all the way back in chapter 3 of this book of Isaiah that when God said he would give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them, he means the children that symbolize the deception in their forehead. That's why Christ says in Mark 13 verse 17, woe to them that are with child, which means impregnated in their forehead with Satan's deception deception, not literal children, but the deception Christ says in Revelation chapter 2 verse 23, he'll kill with death upon his return at the seventh trumpet when the great tribulation begins immediately after the five month long hour of temptation. Therefore said I, look away from me, I will weep bitterly, labor not to comfort me because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. This word spoiling means desolation or destruction, which are both names of Satan, as you can see in Revelation. Revelation chapter 9 verse 11 as well as the last verse of Daniel chapter 9, the desolator being better translated, who for the overspreading of abomination shall make Jerusalem desolate. And again, those who are citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem will die spiritually at 666 for the most part. And if they don't repent before the seventh angel sounds, two and a half months later, they won't take part in the first resurrection into eternal life when the thousand year long day of the Lord begins. For it is a day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. They'll say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us, as Christ says in Luke chapter 23 in the 30th verse. As he was on his way to be crucified in Jerusalem and saying in verse 30, if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? In other words, if they rejected the true Christ, who is the tree of life, who was crucified, crucified at the demand of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, what will they do when Satan, who is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, appears at 666, claiming to be the Messiah, and they'll worship Satan at that time instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means, becoming part of his family tree along with the Kenites, who are the natural branches thereof. And Elam bare the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kerr uncovered the shield, and it's at the seventh trumpet when Babylon falls that the army which were in heaven, who are the rest of the seven thousands of Doc, return with Christ. And that word translated chariots in the Hebrew really just means a vehicle. In this case, the same sort of flying vehicle seen also in Ezekiel chapter 1. And it shall come to pass that thy choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate, which is the place for judgment. It's just before the woe of the seventh trumpet that the seven thousand fallen angels are destroyed who will arrive in flying vehicles vehicles also at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and again at the woe of the sixth trumpet, which is the midst of Daniel's 70th week, which was seven years, but is now five months, Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, as you can see in Daniel 9.27, that word overspreading being the same word in the Hebrew translated as wings in Ezekiel chapter 1. For every positive, there's a negative in Revelation chapter 4. 
4 even corresponds to Ezekiel chapter 1 also. For one thing, you see the four living creatures there as opposed to the four angels loose from the great river Euphrates at 666 you can read of in Revelation chapter 9 beginning with the woe of the sixth trumpet. The 200,000 thousand there being the images of the fallen angel locust army and the consumer stage thereof being transmitted throughout the globe at that time. There's only 7,000 fallen angels as we know from Revelation chapter 11 verse 13 but it appeared to be an innumerable multitude because their images will be on all the smartphones, TVs, and computer screens at that time as well as the image of Satan himself which is the image of the beast that those who have the mark of the beast in their forehead will worship at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. And he discovered the covering of Judah and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. God's protection being removed from most Christians when they become citizens of Babylon at 666, being made naked spiritually and not realizing it until the seventh trumpet when all are changed into spiritual bodies. They'll look to the armor of the house of the forest, meaning they'll realize at that time their so-called protection was from the false tree. In other words, they'll have no protection from being killed spiritually at the sixth trumpet or from the wrath of Almighty God at the seventh trumpet unless they repent, and many will because of what the Holy Spirit will say through those who are delivered up during the sixth trumpet. Ye have seen also the breaches of the city of David, that they are many, and ye gather together the waters of the lower pool, and ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. Ye made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping, and to mourning, and to baldness, and to girding with sackcloth, and behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen, and killing sheep, eating flesh, and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. And this wine is ultimately the wine of the fornication of the whore of Babylon, who says in Revelation chapter 18 and verse 7, I sit a queen and am no widow, thinking Christ has returned and the day of the Lord has begun when it's really the false Christ, the king of Babylon of the end times. And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts, surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts, until the destruction of all flesh at the seventh trumpet. As far as those who fail to repent beforehand are concerned, and it's then that they're placed in the wine press, so to speak, of the wrath of God written of in Revelation chapter 14, verses 18 through 20, purged of the wine of fornication by the discipline taught by Christ through the millennial priesthood throughout the thousand years. That's why it says in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 15 that Christ treadeth the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This is when he kills the deception the children symbolized back in Isaiah chapter 3. The children of Jezebel, which is symbolic of the Nacar as opposed to the Zer, you can read of on page 871 of the Companion Bible. The Zer is an apostate, while the Nacar symbolizes those who are foreign to Christianity, meaning the Kenites as well as all non-Christians, all who are part of Satan's family tree, in other words. But at 666, most Christians become non-Christians also in the whore of Babylon, which means confusion when they cease to be part of God's family tree and are grafted into Satan's family tree along with the Kenites, who are the natural branches thereof. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Go get thee unto this treasurer, even unto Shebna, which is over the house, and say, What hast thou here, and whom hast thou here, that thou hast chewed thee out a sepulchre here, as he that heweth him out a sepulchre on high, and that graveth an habitation for himself in a rock? And it's also written in Numbers chapter 24 in the 21st verse that the Kenites put their nest in a rock, meaning the false rock Shebna ultimately symbolizes, which is Satan when he appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem, and the seventh trumpet is when Satan's role of Antichrist gets destroyed along with this one world system by the true rock, which is the stone cut without hands written of in Daniel chapter 2 verse 34. Christ says to the head Kenites who sat in the seat of Moses during his first advent in Matthew chapter 21 verse 43, the kingdom of God will be taken from you you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof, the many-membered body of the true Christ throughout the globe. To bring forth fruit for the kingdom of God means to preach Jesus, whereby God willing they're added onto the many-membered body as well. Only a Christian
Christian nation can do that, not at geographical location, but the many-membered body of Christ worldwide, and whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. The Kenites causing Christ to be crucified, at which time the veil in the temple was rent, signifying the dawn of Christianity, whereby whosoever will believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood shed on the cross for one and all times will have everlasting life. And when Christ returns, he'll destroy the image of Daniel chapter 2. The Kenites themselves will have their dominion taken away at the seventh trumpet, which is what the brass being broken to pieces in Daniel chapter 2 verse 35 is symbolic of in the ultimate futurist sense. The brass corresponds to the leopard of Daniel chapter 7, which is also in Satan's role of Antichrist is destroyed, which is the little horn of Daniel chapter 7. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee with worms, as you can see in Isaiah 14, 11, a statement of degradation. When Satan's role of false prophet is destroyed and Satan himself is locked up in the bottomless pit, he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. He'll be blotted out in the lake of fire after the thousand years are finished, as promised in Ezekiel 28. And I will drive thee from thy station, and from thy state shall he pull thee down. When his role of Antichrist is destroyed immediately after the five-month-long hour of temptation, it says the chariots of his glory shall be the shame of his Lord's house, because as you can see in Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 through 39, Satan even worships himself, the chariots of his glory, meaning the vehicles of his fallen angel locust army who get destroyed in the earthquake just before the seventh angel sounds, and then in the battles of Armageddon and Haman Gog, the hailstones written of in the last verse of Revelation 16 fall down from God out of heaven, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, which means who God raises up, the son of Hilkiah, which means portion of Yah, and I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, meaning all who are part of God's family tree at that time. The good figs, as opposed to those who are with child and giving suck, who are the evil figs, the world government being destroyed and replaced with the kingdom of God when the true Christ returns as king of kings and lord of lords. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulders, so he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. As Christ says to the church in Philadelphia, made up of the Zadok on earth during the five months, who will serve as priests along with the rest of the Zadok, Christ brings to earth with him upon his return at the seventh trumpet. Those of the church in Philadelphia will have the seal of God in their forehead for the entirety of the five-month-long hour of temptation, as opposed to those who only receive the seed of the seal of God during the grace period of the fifth trumpet. And when the Holy Spirit speaks through those of the church in Philadelphia who are delivered up during the sixth trumpet, Smyrna, who are the 144,000, as well as many out of most of the other churches, will come out of the confusion, which is what Babylon means, and repent, being then able to take part in the first resurrection, becoming part of the millennial priesthood also when the seventh angel sounds. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, Eliakim, that is to say, who is a type of Christ, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons, the offspring and the issue, meaning his entire kindred, as you can see pointed out in the Companion Bible, all who are part of God's family tree at that time and part of the millennial priesthood, in other words, Abraham's seed as opposed to the serpent seed who served the false Christ, meaning the natural branches of Satan's family tree who are the Kenites as well as those who were grafted in. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is supposedly fastened in the sure place be removed meaning at the seventh trumpet when Satan's role of Antichrist gets destroyed and be cut down and fall and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off, meaning the entire kindred of the false Christ, including the Kenites who are symbolized by the leopard of Daniel chapter 7 as well as those still within the lion and the bear. They'll have their dominion taken away in other words, but their lives, which means their souls, will be prolonged until the thousand years are finished and if having absorbed the discipline taught by Christ through the millennial priest 
Brotherhood, they choose to stand against Satan at that time. They'll take part in the second resurrection as opposed to the second death in the lake of fire, becoming Abraham's seed also through Christ Jesus at that time and heirs according to the promise, the promised land being ultimately the eternity, which is the third world age. 